Good day. Uh, you're hearing Pam McCluskey. I'm the curator of African and Oceanic Art at the Seattle Art Museum. And as we are all walking now more than ever, not flying, not riding buses or skateboarding, at least I'm not, uh, it makes me think of artists who've made walking into an art form. I'd like to start with an artist who comes from the world's longest continuous culture, from a people who have walked the most in the history of the planet. This is a look based on an installation we now have up at the museum. Dorothy Nopangardi was born in the central desert of Australia around 1953 among the people of the Walpuri language group north of Alice Springs. And then you see me um, in the left corner, instead of a bubble, I'm there being awed by an art shawl after having walked across the city of Kyoto in November. And I think Dorothy would have adored its texture and coloration for reasons you'll soon see. And I do want to forewarn you that Dorothy is no longer with us and that I will be showing photographs of some deceased people. Basically, to get to her country, though, we're aiming for the center of the continent of Australia, just north of Uluru, the major natural monumental site. Dorothy's home was there in the central desert, and she spoke of the unconditional happiness and freedom she felt when she walked across her family's vast estate, learning the laws and the stories in it and sleeping with the stars as a canopy. Her ancestral home she called Minna Minna, uh, better known by NASA as Lake Mackay. It's part of a crystalline salt region, salt lake region that is quite distinctive. Dorothy said disruption came when she first saw men on horseback announcing the arrival of the cattle industry, which led to decades of cruelty, forced movement to government settlements, and everyone being given white fella names. Her family is miserable and eventually walked back to their country in defiance. Dorothy began painting in 1987, and this is how she painted, honoring the bush banana whose vines burst out with floral patterns and colors that dance across the canvas and establish undulating movement. With painting, she joined a movement started by men and women in the 1970s from Aboriginal communities who've been walking across the Australian continent for over, over 50,000 years. These bush banana are different than the bananas we see and are just one of the many foods that this country provides. Dorothy painted to honor the color and profusion of bush foods and plants for over 10 years, but then she took a major shift. From 1999 on, she pulled back removing the banana, the foliage, and began establishing her own visual language. As you can see, there are intricate networks of dotted lines that expand and contract in mazes, which she dedicated to that sacred Salt Lake site where the salt dries in crusts that her patterns suggest. So in this, Dorothy puts us in a landscape where ancestral women walked across the country to make it into an animated grid that is alive and breathing with a shimmering power. In a short two years, Dorothy had great success as she amplified her scale and reach and landed the coveted Academy Award of Aboriginal Prizes, the Telstra. It was then that a local couple, Bob Kaplan and Margaret Levy, became intrigued enough by her art to become one of her primary patrons for the next decade. Some Australians say that what Dorothy is doing truly reflects the landscape, but it is more in line with poetic language, including suggestion and evocation, allowing for multiple meanings. We know that Dorothy was called the silent one who Garrett preferred not to be pushed for final answers about what she intended. Others say her paintings can also be seen as memories of nights of singing and dancing that occur over and over during ceremonies, when women sing to honor the past of the ancestral women who created their country. I wish you could see this in its full glory, big enough to cover a large museum wall 
and not nearly as well appreciated on your small, small screens. No screen is big enough for this painting. Thankfully, Dorothy became familiar with Seattle and actually came here to visit. Bob and Margaret uh, have provided loans that fill a gallery at the museum now, and I hope you can come to see them in person. One thing to note is that many of Dorothy's paintings are titled Dreamings, but they aren't dreaming as we mostly know it. One member of her community says that dreaming is an all-embracing concept that provides rules for the living, rules for interacting with the natural environment, and provides for a total integrative way of life that isn't only of the past, but a lay, live daily reality. And I got to live that reality for a day uh, with this wonderful family that live in a country nearby where Dorothy hung out, uh, Uendamu, with Patty, Bessie, and Otto Sims. Taking a walk was a wondrous experience of seeing their landscape through their eyes uh, with a time of being narrated that this landscape was full of many things that may have happened a few years ago, but others that come from the dreaming creation time when ancestors shape-shifted to create the country. Going back to Dorothy, by 2012, she was at the height of recognition, being given commissions like this one, a gigantic carpet uh, that enables everyone to walk across her sand hills in a soft, comfy form. At this time, she was raising five daughters, mostly in Alice Springs, but Dorothy was known to love going to her country for bush tucker, which means hunting for bush foods. On the left, she's using a digging stick to get after some yams. She hunted goanna and echidna, and Bob recounts how the smell of lunch with Dorothy was always very distinctive. But then one day, towards dusk, she and her friends were out in the country and had a car accident that took her life. We now get to see her paintings, and I hope they give you a new sense of how to watch the patterns and listen to the rhythms of the landscape you walk across, and that it's good to stop occasionally to consider the ancestors who walked before you. Another walking artist who uses a vocabulary that resonates with Dorothy's is also in the Seattle Art Museum collection. Richard Long was born in England uh, a decade before Dorothy. When he was an art student, he got off a train from Waterloo and walked through a field of grass over and over to create this line in 1967. This was just the beginning of a life of walking and making art outdoors in the Himalayas, uh, in the Andes, here in Scotland, and in Mongolia. Richard has said, quote, walking has a cultural history from pilgrims to the wandering Japanese poets to the English romantics, and now to contemporary long distance walkers. In the 1980s, he also became known for painting with mud indoors and was shown in combination with Australian Aboriginal artists who painted on the earth uh, in an exhibition called Magicians of the Earth. Uh, and this is when Richard would have met Patty Japaljari Sims, who you just saw. Richard then came, I mean, he just came to Seattle not long thereafter uh, to paint this Puget Sound mud circle at the Henry Art Gallery. Then a couple of years later, he was given a commission um, by Jeffrey and Susan Brotman to paint a more permanent circle uh, and used mud of a type gathered from the sound, which he applied amazingly swiftly from a scaffolding freehand and this still keeps swirling over the heads of those that visit us on the mezzanine of the museum's South Hall. His mud painting, paintings um, indoors tend to be of geometric form, uh, as are his outdoor projects where he gets messy, as in these two um, circles in India that he likes to say, quote, I like the idea that it is always possible to walk in new ways for new reasons. 
These two circles are from more recent work uh, and utilize what is around in a way that focuses your attention on the setting and the elemental configurations that could have been in place there long ago. And then more recently, I came across a circle uh, in a set of trees in the Arboretum. Don't know who did this, but it is a wonderful way of recognizing that what you have on hand in your environment can often make great art. This month, I can't help but say goodbye to an artist who helped enact what I consider one of the most poignant walks about desire that I know of. Marina Abrenovich and her partner, collaborator, known as Ule, were together for over a decade and then took a walk to test their desire for marriage. They each walked the entire Great Wall of China uh, for 90 days. And at the end of 90 days, they began in March, they met in the middle and hugged. However, what was meant to be the ultimate seductive alignment had dissolved. It turned out that in the process of years of getting permission to do this walk from the Chinese government, Ule had fallen in love with the Chinese translator involved and he left to marry her. He and Marina did not meet again for many years. Ule just passed away last month. In this time of heightened walking, the museum offers the Olympic Sculpture Park with vistas to the Puget Sound. However, it is also a place that calls out for us to pay our respects to the original owners of the land, the Coast Salish people, whose presence is made evident in these plantings of species that have medicinal qualities and their names in the Lushutsi language. You need to find the inside out flower if you have trouble with hay fever or you can look for the sword fern fronds to teach your children how to hold their breath if they need to die for seed weed. And if you can walk up the hill just a couple of blocks, you'll come to see the leader who signals to the Puget Sound where his voice, his booming voice, they say it was, once led canoes full of people, of course, none other than Chief Seattle. You might also at that time look out to Elliott Bay, uh, down towards Pike Place Market, and think about the time it was once the home to Princess Angeline and her dog, where she lived until her death. Or you can go down and walk along the beach at the Sculpture Park to recognize the way it once supported families of Salish people who lived on these shores. And if you'd like to immerse yourself further in the Australian landscape and Aboriginal viewpoints, Walk About, of course, is also the name of a film that launched the career of a great, great actor, David Gallipoli. Uh, any chance you get to see him is a time to savor. For Charlie's Country, at least, is one that I highly recommend. So we'll end with a saying from Australia. And I hope you can carry images of some of these artistic walks to enhance your own and that you'll come to the museum and the park to see and walk around what's been virtual on your screen, take shape in full dimensions when we open again. Some say museums are a place where you get to promenade before great creativity to take in what you can. Sam is a great place to walk about the world. And thank you so much for listening. We'll see you there someday soon. Bye-bye.